Hi, it's Rex at RW Mods. I wanted to redo my uh, how to take apart a nitro engine video. I've wanted to redo that one for a while, and but I had I have some tools that I've been using at in the shop that uh, work good taking the sleeve out, and I wanted to do um, 3D printed ones with my 3D printer, but I downloaded the Fusion 360 to design them and stuff, and it just didn't work on my computer, and months went by. I finally found a program that would work and got it working and so I've got uh, these little tools uh, this is for removing the sleeve it's kind of takes the place of a zip tie for catching the port when you're uh, taking the sleeve out and then this one is uh, goes down in the carb bore uh, if you're if you need a piston lock tool you take the carb out put it down in there I'll show you how to use it uh, when we get inside and do it I just thought I'd come outside I got the furnace on in the shop so it was kind of noisy in there so I thought I'd come outside so we're gonna redo this video hopefully you like it the other one is 4-3 um, audios kind of echoey and stuff so I thought I'd redo it I think I got some better light and some better cameras and stuff now so we'll dig inside okay we're in the shop here and uh, you can get a little closer look of these tools I have um, did a little 3d did a name plate here. Been messing around with the software a little bit. So when we take the engine apart I'll show you how to use these tools but for now that's uh, them. Well, I'll have these for sale. Uh, I'll have the tools for sale. I'll have the link in the description down below. I'm not sure if I'll just, I might, I might just throw them on eBay for now um, rather than have a buy it now on the site. So I want to do an engine uh, video on how to take apart an engine. I left the clutch on this one um, just to uh, kind of show a lot of people don't really know how to take a clutch off. I have a clutch video uh, if you look in my playlist and basically all you need is a um, glow plug wrench will fit this and then uh, I use a pliers and uh, put that on this one's not super tight and then uh, take the nut off uh, I guess I had the clutch there's usually just a, a nut clutch valve on here. Uh, there's a, a bearing and a, a screw on the end you need to take off. So yeah, I get, look at the clutch video. I, I think I went through in depth on pretty much on everything in the clutch video. Uh, this clutch is loose. They're, they're usually tight and you'll need a clutch puller. So the clutch puller pulls on, goes on here, catches the back side of that. The screw uh, pushes on there. You tighten it. Well, we'll go through it here. I have my own one that I made too that works pretty well too. So the, the clutch would be on here, you tighten this and it pulls it off. That's really one of the only ways. You can't really pound on it with a hammer and stuff. So that's that part. So uh, having a nice clean work area when you're working on engines is important. Especially important in reassembling. Um, if you have a um, if you have a good way to clean everything, really don't need to worry on disassembly. <clears throat> I actually don't like taking an engine apart at the track and stuff if I don't have a good way of cleaning it. I use like a hot water uh, pressure washer. It's like a for doing like engine blocks and stuff like full size engine blocks. But and they're really it is kind of hard to do at home. And tedious and the guys use a brake cleaner and some different things and but uh, I haven't really done that for a while so I can't really offer you too much advice that way so an another thing you're gonna need is some good drivers uh, for the screws here these MIPs are the best I I held out on like Indigy and cheaper tools for quite a while I got these I'm like gosh I got them years ago uh, the tips are the tips just uh, they're just a little bit oversized where they just if it's a brand new screw if it's a brand new screw 
you can barely you have to push to get it in there they're just that tight and they they don't strip the screws where a lot of screws are you know even a new driver and a new screw they're a little bit of play there so these are slightly oversized so that works out well they're guaranteed and then if you're doing a if you're doing an over also you're gonna need a, a flat blade screwdriver and this is the best the best one I found is this Philo uh, I think I've seen them on Amazon you can check a few different places this one is actually a little bit this one works but I think I have the other one that's a 5.0 it's it's um, not here right now it's a 5.0 and that one works a little bit better 5.0 by 0.8 maybe I'm not sure it's just the next size smaller than this one this one will work but it's a little tight in some of the screws so I like that other one a little bit better so we're gonna take this apart like I said you need a good driver um, well uh, most of them most uh, engines use a two and a half on the engine screws uh, some engines use a three so it is pretty common to uh, strip out a screw I, I get quite a few in a year that uh, you know maybe they weren't using a good driver it wasn't in there all the way maybe there was dirt there um, wrong size or something and it strips that and it's a uh, it's kind of tricky to get them out. The best thing, if you just have one uh, one screw stripped and you can get the other three out, once you get three of them out, that third one will have less pressure on it. Uh, another thing too is you can drill. If you drill the, the head off, go down there in with a drill and drill the head off, it'll come off and then you can have just, gonna, the screw will be sticking up a little bit and you can just pull it out with the pliers usually. Um, on the Nova Rossi's, with it being a flathead screw and it's kind of a there's not really a good spot to get into with a drill bit to start and it, it'll wander then I had to use a make some sleeves like a, I have them at work a couple sleeves in there to guide the drill bit to, so it doesn't wander it's I get a few out a year and, and I, I do take broken screws out sometimes on the cranks too when they break off in there if a left-handed drill bit it works better in a lathe and stuff so it's a little hard to do at home but I, I can save an engine by getting that three millimeter screw out there if you do. So we're going to take the back plate off now. Okay, uh, before you start pulling the back plate off, a lot of uh, back plates will will ruin the piston if the piston's down. At bottom dead center when you try and take the back plate off not all engines but some a lot of engines so you I see a few engines a year they asking if they could buy just a piston or if they could fix the piston uh, but there's really you you've ruined your piston and sleeve if you take the back plate off so the piston needs to be up you can just look and make sure it's up and usually what I do to take the back plate off is twist and pull and sometimes You'll need to, uh, sometimes if you get a, a flat blade screwdriver like this one, and just lightly pry with that, that'll work too if, it, if it's stubborn. This one came off pretty nice. And that's what I'm saying, see the, the uh, groove there? When the piston's at bottom dead center, the piston is in there. Uh, and it'll, if you're pulling the back plate off, it'll catch it and break the bottom of the skirt of the piston off. So that's one thing you, you have to do, and that happens to several people. Uh, a year I hear about so um, so we'll take the head button off and I actually just recently found this way to take the head button off uh, sometimes you, I mean I, I used to like try and pry with a screw you know if it was tight this one's loose I guess but uh, if it's if it's pretty tight some of them are really tight in there and uh, you know prying on a screwdriver screwdriver Prying in there is probably not bad. It, I, I could see maybe breaking the top fin off or something. But one thing I found works really well is to put a plug wrench on and then just kind of twist as you pull. And it usually works very well. Just 
because it's tight in there, the, the motion of twisting it locks it on the glow plug and pulls as it as it comes out. So that works really well and works most of the time. So we got some you gotta be mindful when you take the engine apart for the the head shims. So the head button, head shims. Let's take the carb off here too now. Uh, usually it's a two millimeter, two millimeter driver. And a lot of times the best uh, best way is to take and push in with this screw, or sometimes you might need to tap on the driver. So you've pushed out this side. You've pushed that side of the wedge out, and then if you turn it this way it pushes this one, it kind of pushes it away a little bit as you turn it and it can come out. Um, if that doesn't work, and some OS is kind of stick in there a little bit harder, so you'd maybe loosen the screw more and push this one all the way out and then take a driver and kind of tap tap both of them out and that helps a little bit too. So now we're coming to the part where uh, a lot of people have trouble is getting the sleeve out. And you're like, how do I get that sleeve out? It's it's flush in there. Uh, some people try and pound up from the bottom. They don't really know what to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a just a three millimeter screw, put it in the end of the crank. There's some Loctite in that thing. And then uh, here's where my tool comes into play. I got two sides. That one's a little bit narrower and then a wider side. So um, some of the three port exhausts are a little bit narrower. But uh, this just goes in there, hooks the exhaust port. So I'll show you when I get it out. It just hooks the exhaust port and then you turn it and it comes up. So you're just turning on the screw and, and it, the piston drives it up. And so, yeah, so you, it just hooks there. Actually, it's a little bit big for this sleeve. But you can, with this thing too, you can grind a little bit off it if you need even narrower one. Like some some exhaust ports are, I think I got one here. Oh, see, this one's a three-port exhaust. See so, you how it's quite a bit narrower. It would, would work on that one. All you need to do is catch that and then not use anything metal to get the, that sleeve out because it um, I see some people you know when it's up a little ways they'll they'll grab a, a pliers on there and stuff and I, I see them all the time I mean it seems like a third of the piston and sleeves I get in for resizing they have marks around the outside and and what you know you can see where they wedged with a screwdriver and like you guys need to watch my video that there's easy ways to do this so uh, Please don't use anything metal, don't use pliers, don't use screwdrivers. If you have trouble, um, send it to me. I only charge $30 to rebuild the full engine, that we're resizing and everything. So uh, that's the best way to do it that I've found. And then uh, this, this smaller tool uh, fits in the, the opening for the carb into the crank. So. Um, just drops in there and what that does is if if the clutch there is sometimes it happens it happens to me uh, you get the clutch nut off or no you're taking the clutch nut off and the flywheel's loose so like I said you you're gonna grab onto the to the flywheel with the pliers and you put that wrench on there well the Loctite or whatever lock was was locking the nut on and so you're just holding this in the the crank spinning well then you're kinda you're kinda screwed um, because it, aside from putting up pliers in somewhere or you know or a screwdriver in somewhere that that crank will can, you can't get that clutch off so what I do is I even at the track or something happens if I'm changing clutches I'll take the carb off just drop that down in there and then I can grab my my wrench, and that'll keep 
that'll keep it from spinning. And anything will work. I just it just needs to be plastic or something that's not going to mar up the aluminum block or the steel crank or something. So anything will work. It doesn't have to be this tool, but I I thought as long as, as long as I was making the other one, I would make both of them and, and sell them as a set. Um, I think I'm talking about uh, I'm looking at about twenty dollars shipped for the two. And, and they won't work on a real small, like a 12, a 0.12. So, so then um, after that, my piston came off here. This one came apart easy. I gotta show you how to take this off here. So once we got the, the sleeve out, the piston is just, or the rod is just on the crank here. And that just, you just uh, grab it with your fingers like this and pull it up. It'll come off there, and then it comes out. So that'll, and that's what I was talking about, the bottom of that skirt. At bottom dead center, this is relief for that. So if you if it's all the way down and you try and pull this uh, back plate off, it's going to grab and, and break the bottom of the skirt, and then you're either buying a new engine or a new piston sleeve. And so... So then the last thing we have to take apart is the is the crank. Now sometimes they're stuck in the in the bearings pretty pretty hard. This one just came out like butter here, but uh, but uh, it, you can tap on the crank or sometimes just take a piece of wood or whatever and kind of beat down. It'll come off. Uh, some are real stubborn, but uh, just use common sense and don't use a you know a steel hammer on it. Or, you know use a piece of wood or plastic or something to beat on it. So we have the, the crank out now. So I have another video uh, that, that shows what I do when I rebuild an engine, like if you send me an engine to rebuild. and So I have all that covered and stuff, and um, I think I have in some other videos how to take the bearings out and stuff too. But uh, this is about it. Uh, the cleanliness part is on the assembly. I think I'm going to redo that assembly video also maybe I'll rebuild this engine and then uh, assemble it back up and uh, that's when they're cleaning this uh, and things to look for I, I, like in that rebuilding video I show uh, how to look for where the wear points the biggest point of wear is is right here in this this rod bushing this one feels pretty tight yet and uh, but the the proper way is to use a micrometer and, and check that because it'll only wear on one side so it'll it'll be oval shaped and then I use a bore gauge to actually measure the bore of this rod bushing and and they'll wear just on the top side on the on the push side it'll just wear on the top here so there's a lot of things to look for when you rebuild an engine but uh, these are the main things this is one of my favorite engines I wish they still made it the, the FX K501R, 501R. That's a five port, and it was their their race version without a DLC coated crank. And these sold for like 210 bucks. And the thing, this one, I mean, I'm a modifier. There's no modifying on this thing. I ran it stock. I didn't. There's no modifying on this. Uh, so this engine ran. It just pulled my truggy just really good. I think the only thing I did is I rebuilt it I put a ceramic bearing in that was the only thing I really did to this thing so uh, tune in to my uh, assembly video and uh, thanks for watching